So here's my high voltage power supply, 30 kilovolt power supply. And then here you can see two transistors, both attached to some heat shrink material. Uh, these transistors are each 2N3055 transistors. And as the power supply runs, the transistors get hot. Um, so we need to dissipate that heat somewhere. We need to conduct it to something, and that's what the uh, heat sink is for. We'll conduct the heat from the transistor to the heat sink. But we don't want to conduct electricity that way. Let me just open up the power supply here. I've already unscrewed it. So you can see it's a, it's a uh, flyback type power supply with a voltage multiplier right here. Now there's your uh, transistor. And if I look at the other side, you can see here's where it all connects to this funky thing with these wires. So what is all that? Well, here you go. That's what all this is. Um, this is the transistor itself. And when I purchased it, I also picked up these pieces. Sometimes they'll give them to you for free, sometimes you, you have to buy them. Uh, this is a washer, this is all the connection stuff for the other side, and this is some thermal grease or thermal paste. It's uh, thermally conductive, but uh, it's electrically insulative, so it won't conduct electricity. And the whole idea here is you put the washer on the transistor like so. Um, now this washer is electrically insulating, but it's a thermal conductor. So the whole idea is when you mount this to the uh, heat sink right there, um, the heat will be transferred or conducted uh, from the transistor to the heat sink. But there will be no electrically conduction going on. Uh, why is that a danger? Well, if you look at your transistor, there are actually three conductive parts right here. This is your emitter, this is your base, and this whole surface here, this metal surface area, is actually your collector. So it's, uh, it's an electrically conductive uh, component of the transistor as well. And it needs to electrically conduct, which it will. Um, but we don't want it to electrically conduct to the heat sink, hence the washer. Uh, but the washer is not a perfectly smooth material. It's a little bit lumpy. And um, so we want to have very good connection between the washer and the metal surface of the uh, transistor and the metal surface of the um, uh, heat sink. So we want good thermal conductivity. And that's what the paste is, paste is for, or the grease. Uh, you put a thin layer of that on the collector right here on this metal. That way it'll be sandwiched between the metal and the uh, washer, giving a good thermal connection between here and here. And you also put a layer of it here as well on the heat sink between the washer and the heat sink. So that way you have a very good connection, thermally, thermal connection, not electrical, but thermal connection between the transistor and the heat sink. And you can see that right here. If you look very closely, you'll see that uh, there's some paste on the heat sink, then there's your blue washer, then there's some paste, and then there's the transistor itself. So now let me just, I'll, and I'll demonstrate all that. Okay, so now to put on the thermal grease or thermal paste. Simply squeeze it out here. And we'll slit. Seems to be good. It looks like it dried up over the years, but anyway, it's good for demonstration. I'll put it on the transistor, and then do the other side. One thing you don't want to do is you don't want to have it on these conductors here on the prongs. It's on the prongs, it is an insulating grease. <laughs> and, uh, it's on the prongs, they won't conduct. There Here's my chunk of heat sink. And actually I would just take this and cut off a piece and the case for the power supply would be right here. This would be mounted to the power supply case. But I'm going to ignore all that for now. Uh, this piece I just got at a second-hand shop, second-hand electrical shop. 
Now, which way do you put the, the transistor in? Well, it's actually unidirectional. Um, You'll notice the, uh, the two prongs here on the transistor are closer to this mounting hole than they are to this mounting hole. And if you look at the heat sink, same thing. These two holes right here for the prongs to go through are closer to this mounting hole than this mounting hole. So there really is only one way to put it through. So just grab it here and put the transistor through like that. And check on this side. Now on this side I want to make sure that the uh, mounting holes all go through fine and also the two prongs right here you want to make sure they're not electrically conducting not touching the heat sink um, so we're fine right now if they are once you've got everything mounted simply take a uh, meter and check for conductivity between the prongs and the heat sink there should be none Okay, next we take this piece right here, and that similarly also has uh, you know, two holes that are closer to one mounting hole than the other hole. So we simply take it and line up the holes and push it in place. There we go, it kind of snaps in place right there and holds fairly well too. Uh, then I take a um, bolt. Uh, this bolt right here, it doesn't come with anything. I just went to Home Hardware. You go to only uh, Home Depot. Go to any hardware store, and you know if they have a bunch of miscellaneous section, you just bring your transistor and try out different parts until you find the right nut and bolt that that fit it. And there we go. I put the other one on, but I won't bother right now. Okay, I just want to show you a few things right here. First of all, um, where do you connect to with your wires? Now, first of all, if we look at the transistor, we we'll see that all this metal piece right here, as I said before, is the collector. Uh, so how does that connect to this? Well, it does it through the nut and bolt, <laughs> right? So the uh, the bolt is right here, the head of it. That's connected to the case, which is the collector. And there it goes. It connects to this piece of metal right here, this long strip right here. And the other nut and bolt would be right there. So for the collector, you connect to this prong that's sticking up from the strip right here. For the emitter, well, here's the hole that we push the prong through, and that is electrically connected to this thing sticking up right there. So you would uh, connect your emitter wire to this piece, and similarly for the base right here, we push the prong through that hole right here and that's electrically connected to this thing that's sticking up. So you could solder or connect to it however you want for your base. It actually says B right there and E is written right there if you're not sure. Well, here's the power supply again. There's the uh, transistor on that side. And here we go on this side. Now you can see the uh, base is this red wire right here which is soldered to this uh, piece that's sticking out right here. There's your collector, that's the white wire. And then the emitter, a little harder to tell because it's black on black, is this black wire right here that's soldered to there. There we go, all complete.